So in this video I'm going to be showing you my new upgrades I've added to my new computer. It's going from like being a mainly budget build to a bit more performance to go with it. It's not the top of the top tier but it's just like sub £1,000 setup. That's the setup as a whole, not just me tower. So the tower itself comes to about 800 Alright, so the parts I'm going to be upgrading to my setup today is the... I've got an SSD, which is a Kingston 120GB SSD now V300, I think. Uh, the case is a NZXT S340 mid tower. It's a nice looking mid tower, as you'll see in like, the end result. The graphics card I'm getting is a Gigabyte GTX 970G1. It's a really good overclocking card. It costs me about £280. And the last upgrade I've got is a new power supply. I've gone to a 600 watt Corsair power supply, which is a Corsair CX600M. It's a semi modular, so it'll be easier to cable manage. Not that cable manage is really a factor in this new case, because it is pretty tidy as it is, even with like non modular power supplies. For the full list of components and my setup, obviously some things of the old stuff, you can look in the description, I'll have it all said there. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll probably talk a bit later on in the video. I also got some in-game footage of games like Battlefield 4, Far Cry 4 and Skyrim. All these games were in an ultra settings, completely maxed out in 1080p. You'd be able to tell how smooth the gameplay is, it usually hovered around 60 to 100 FPS, which is pretty good to say it was running ultra. So I obviously took advantage of my um, GTX 970G1's overclocking capabilities. What I did was I overclocked the core clock speed by 130. This gave me a total of about 1500 MHz. I also overclocked the memory clock by 200, which gave me about 3700 like memory clock. Which is pretty good, the G1 is really good for overclocking. And the benchmarks in the game, or the in-game footage, will be overclocked footage, so bear that in mind.
talk about the like, build process and how it went. It was actually really easy, but this is mainly because that the uh, NZXT S340 is really good for like cable management and just just like making room, ev making like use of everything in the case. There's a lot of like cable tie down points where you can just tie your cables on the back of the case. There's a lot of places where you can route your cables. I did run into one like kind of major issue with the graphics card. It's the GTX 970G1. It is pretty new. You've got to bear that in mind. Uh, my motherboard, when I bought my PC, like my first original budget rig, about a year ago, uh, it was very, like I say, budget orientated. And because of that, I bought a pretty cheap, poor standard uh, motherboard. And using that graphics card on my motherboard was not that compatible. Because of the space and the um, how you could access the, the PCI Express slot wasn't very good. So when I put it in, I put the, uh, the card in. And then I realised I had to take it back out. I couldn't get around to the like latching switch to pull the graphics card back out. So when I pulled it out, it pulled the PCI Express slot out itself, and that, that nearly like really damaged the motherboard. I managed to fix it by sliding each individual pin back into place, but it did take a while and it did scare me. Another major, major thing when you like choosing the case and seeing how it forms is airflow. A lot of people say the NZXT S34 isn't very good for airflow. But I think the way I've got it like configured, I'm using the front slot as like a intake of air, blowing it with just two dual fans. And they've also got uh, LEDs on the fans that look really nice too. The airflow has been really good. I've been getting really good CPU and GPU temps. So I can't really complain about the temperatures as a whole. The airflow has been not a problem at all with this case so far. So this has been my first SSD and I've got no complaints whatsoever. Obviously they've got a high price and I paid about £50 for my SSD, maybe like £45, £40 pound from Amazon, but 120GB uh, for like £40, obviously I can't do anything about the price, but what you can fit on there is really good, like is in like how it performs and stuff you've got on there. I can't complain about it, I'll never go back to like buying, you know, just having a rig without an SSD, I just couldn't do that. So if you're thinking about buying an SSD, just buy one, they're really, really good. The GTX 970's performance is, to me, has like gone from really budget build to a bit higher. It's perfect, it, it just performs every game, max settings plus, 60 FPS plus, there's nothing to complain about it. I did have an issue with it at first, but the um, performance was dipping quite a lot and I was like, why is this cost, why did this cost me £300? Then I only installed the drivers, did a clean install while I were in safe mode. Of the newest drivers and that fixed that issue for me. I wasn't sure whether it was the problem I had with pulling the PCI slot out but it was probably that but I'm gonna buy a new motherboard for that issue anyway. Uh, but the, it just every game it just destroyed. I have no problem with it whatsoever and if I ever do need a future upgrade what I'd probably do instead of going like spending an extra like £500 on the newest like graphics card is I'll probably run it in SLI mode. My current motherboard doesn't support SLI but my new one I'm gonna get should and I know there's quite a lot of bad things about SLI but Judging on the situation, I might end up running SLI. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the little build vlog. It was a lot better than my other one because the higher quality components. If you did like the video, then like the video. If you dislike the video, then dislike the video. <laughs> yeah, but um, you can also leave a comment if you want to, and I'll see you around.